Hi. Today we'll be reading from Psalms chapter 141. Psalms chapter 141. And we'll begin reading in verse number 1. Psalms 141. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. Let's start off with a word of prayer before we begin. Heavenly Father, we th we're thankful for the day you've given us, Lord. Thank you for the time we're going to have in your word. And Father, I pray that as we look at your word that you will speak to us. Father, change us. Father, this world needs to see people who believe in you, who follow you. So Father, help what we learn today to, to apply to that, to help people see you living not only inside of us, but see you working through us also. Father, just thank you again, and we'll pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Psalms 141, beginning in verse 1, and it says, Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Incline not my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity. And let me not eat of their dainties. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. I want to speak right now about criticism. Criticism can be a hard pill to swallow. And when we look at the psalm in Psalms 141, this was written by David. And here David shows us how to handle and to react to criticism. Because I'm sure as a leader, being a king, I'm sure he faced a lot of criticism. He could have faced criticism by someone who thought that he should have done it differently or that maybe they could have done it better. But somewhere along the way, him being a person in charge with a lot of people under him, he had to face criticism. And how a person reacts to it, that it being criticism, it can be a path to learning or it can be a path to hurt. I remember when I was in Bible college, I took a preaching workshop class, and every so often you had to preach in front of the class, and it was a class of other men, and I remember the first time I had to preach there, I preached this sermon, and my intro, I took it from a book that I was reading at the time, and I used part of the, from the book, and then I, I preached the message, and at the end of, of each sermon, the teacher of the class, he would critique you, he would give his criticism about the sermon you preached and his criticism for my very first sermon that I preached in that class was that I shouldn't have used something from a book but I should have used a real life experience because he said people can relate to real life experiences a whole lot better than something from a book and you know at that moment I was kind of hurt I guess I was kind of embarrassed but I was kind of hurt and it took me a couple days, but the Holy Spirit got me thinking in the direction in that this man, he was critiquing me not to hurt me. He was critiquing me, giving me his criticism, so as to help my preaching in the coming years, that I would be more effective at it, do something greater for the Lord through my preaching. And so I had to look at it in that instance. And I think that if we as Christians, the world needs to see this, that if when we are confronted with criticism, if we can look at it as something productive instead of something hurtful, then we'll be a whole lot better off. So what I want to do, I want to look at David's example of what we should, what how, of how we should face when confronted with criticism, how we should face criticism, how we should react to criticism when somebody gives it to you. First thing that I believe we should do in order to face criticism in the right way is we should accept it. Accept it. Uh, look at verse 3. Look at verse 5. The very first part of verse 5, he says, let the righteous smite me. When he said, let the righteous smite me, he said, bring it on. You know, I'll accept it. And I believe that when criticism comes, we should just accept it. You know, looking at, at how we react to it, I think a lot of it depends on how the Holy Spirit Spirit works inside of us. Look at verse 3. 
verse 3, he says, Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. I think that's something that many Christians should be praying on a daily, hourly basis, is, Dear Lord, watch the door of my lips. Because many times our words can get us into a lot of trouble. Because once they leave your mouth, once you speak them, once you type them, once you uh, relay them somehow, whatever way, to somebody, it's hard to take them back. And, and it's almost impossible to take them back because they're already out there. And David said, you know what, Lord? Guard my lips. Um, I think a good verse that we can look at in, in pertaining to this, going to the New Testament, look at Romans chapter 12, verse 8. The book of Romans chapter 12, look at verse number 8. Romans chapter 12, look at verse number 8. The book of Romans, New Testament, book of Romans chapter 12, look at verse number 8. And it says, Or he that exhort, or exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. I, I, I dearly believe that we have to show mercy with cheerfulness. You know, just, and, and, and when confronted with criticism, hey, just be merciful on the person, but also be happy, you know, just accept it. And then go to look at verse 18 also, still in Romans chapter 12. And it says, and I believe that we have to show mercy because here it says in verse 18, if it be possible as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. See, living peaceably means that there are going to be times when criticism is thrown at you and you're just going to have to, instead of charging into it and, and spouting off with your mouth about it, just accept it. Hey, you don't know what the person's intentions are, but just accept it. But then going back to Psalms 141, look at verse 4 now. Look at what David says. He says, Incline not my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked, wicked works with men that work iniquity, and let me not eat of their dainties. He says, don't let it incline my heart to evil. And I think that we as Christians, we have to do the same, make the same decision. That hey, it, suppose somebody just off the wall gives you some type of negative criticism, don't let it incline your heart, don't let it get to your heart to, to start devising these wicked things to get back at that person. Because that's not what God wants us to do. Sometimes criticism puts people on the defensive. And when they go on the defensive, they start to say things that maybe aren't Christ-like. And I believe that if we can make the decision to use it to better ourselves, then we're doing exactly what David's talking about. Having a different perspective on your actions or your dealings can help a person improve. Look at that criticism as a different perspective. You know, sometimes we look at everything the way that we're looking at it, but when somebody can come along and give us a fresh outlook, then it can help us to be better at what we're doing. And if we can choose to go that route and say, hey, that's a fresh perspective, fresh eyes, so let me accept that and use it to better myself. So how should we face criticism? First of all, accept it. Plain and out accept it. Guard your lips, guard your heart, but just let it come because you can use it to be productive. Second thing that I believe that we should do in order to face criticism the right way is we should consider it something good. A lot of times people look at criticism as something bad, but look at it as something good. You know, you look at a business, whenever they have a, a comment card, they're there for criticism. When they can accept that criticism and look at it and, and correct things that maybe they haven't seen, then all they're doing is bettering themselves. And I believe that we as Christians, we can do the same thing. Consider it something good. Look at it, the second part of verse 5. Psalms 141, look at verse 5. Let the righteous smite me. And then he, David says, it shall be a kindness. David considered criticism a kindness. Where many people look at criticism as something hurtful, something negative, he looked at it as something good, something positive. See, David being a king could have dismissed criticism 
by throwing the person offering the criticism into prison. He could have had them killed. He could have reacted in a, in a very harsh way. But David chose to let it be something good. Wow. That's a godly person. See, choosing this route of making criticism something good helps you control your reactions to it. You know, and I and I have figured this out and I have realized it many times and and having godly people around you will help you to look at situations in a different way. You know, it is before a person can come to Christ, things can happen to them and they can let them just ruin their lives and just let it upset them. But many times after a person comes to Christ, they can see life in a different way. Look at and react to things in a different way. And if we can choose to make criticism not something hurtful, not something to take criticism as something that's going to devastate us, but choose to make criticism something that's good because we know it'll help us control our reactions in the future, but at the same time, it'll help us to better ourselves. See, when a person reacts by being defensive, it creates a tense situation. Becoming a person of optimism instead of being a pessimist takes the very Spirit of God living inside of us. You know, I look at the life of Jesus here on this earth. And when he began, he began his public ministry, there were a lot of things that were hurtful, I'm sure, to Jesus. To see his own people, the ones that he came to save, to see them react and to dismiss him and to reject him could have been very hurtful. A lot of things the, the Pharisees said unto him were very hurtful. But you never saw Jesus, and he is our ultimate example, our ultimate example. You never saw Jesus look at those things and just make him react in the wrong way. He always did the godly thing. And that's something that we as Christians should aspire to. To do the Christian thing, to do the godly thing, to do the righteous thing. And even when it comes to something like criticism, first of all, accept it. But secondly, consider it something good, an act of kindness. You know, that's what I love about the Word of God. Because the Word of God can talk about eternal things, about salvation, about heaven, about hell eternal things, uh, even when it comes to the end of this world and the new heaven, the new earth. But also the Word of God deals with things that some people would consider trivial. But I don't consider it trivial. I consider it uh, these, these everyday things that affects us. And it affects us spiritually. And if we can look at these everyday things that may come into our lives and deal with them, in the spiritual way, how much better off we'll be in being a positive impact for this world. So, first of all, when criticism is offered, first of all, accept it. Don't fight it, just accept it. It'll de-escalate any situation. Secondly, consider it something good. Consider it something positive. David considered it a kindness. Consider it something that we can build on and have a fresh perspective, but I believe that also not only accepting it, not only consider it something good, I believe in order to react to criticism in the right way, we have to realize that criticism won't kill us. It won't kill us. Look at verse 5 again, Psalms 141. Verse 5, it says, Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. Then look at what, what David says here. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil which shall not break my head. What David was saying is that, hey, that criticism, it's not going to hurt me. I mean, it, it may get to me just for a very second, but it's not going to hurt me. It's not going to break my head. It's not going to cause me harm. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil which shall not break my head. See, the person offering the criticism may have honest intentions or negative intentions. You know, in Bible college, my instructor at the time, uh, in that preaching workshop class, he didn't have uh, any kind of negative intentions. He had positive, honest intentions to make me more effective as a preacher one day. That's why he offered that criticism. 
And, you know, even though the person that may offer that criticism, if they have honest intentions or negative intentions, that's not our worry. That's between them and God. That's between them and God, and God can set them straight if they're doing it to hurt you, or he can reward them for having honest intentions that will help us to better ourselves for the work of Christ. See, I believe that if we put Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 at the forefront of all we do, then we can and will use criticism productively. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 22, look at verse 37. Matthew chapter 22, look at verse 37. Matthew chapter 22, look at verse 37. In Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37, And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. See, if we can keep that at the forefront of all that we attempt to do for Jesus Christ, loving him with all that we have, then we can and will use criticism productively. It doesn't come right away. It's not an instantaneous kind of reaction that we're going to have. But as you grow deeper with the Lord and you walk in the Spirit, then we're going to be able to handle criticism. We're going to be able to accept it. We're going to be able to consider it something good. But we're also going to realize that it's not going to kill us. It is, it is only going to make us better for the work of the Lord. See, I mentioned walking the Spirit, because once we begin to, to read our Bibles and we spend time in prayer talking to God and we grow closer in our, in our relationship with Christ, then we begin to understand what walking in the Spirit is all about, because once we walk in the Spirit, that means the Spirit controls us. We yield ourselves to Him, and in turn, He controls our actions, and He definitely controls us even in times of criticism. He allows us to look at it in a new way. Accepting it, consider it something good, but also realizing it's not going to kill us. And if we choose to react offensively and get in heated arguments, it doesn't solve anything. You know, the Bible talks a lot about our anger, about our wrath, that we're not supposed to, to get heated up like that. Because that's not what God wants from us. You know, David was... Uh, a man of, of, of great love for the Lord. He was a leader. He led the people in the way of God. But he also knew what it meant to let God control him. Even though he was the, the greatest of all kings, he was uh, taking over new territory, and he was just doing great things for God, he still understood what criticism was all about. Accepting it, letting it be something good, but at the same time realizing it wasn't going to kill him. It was only going to make him better for the Lord. How will you choose to face criticism? That's what you have to ask yourself. Some of us aren't very well, aren't very good at, at accepting criticism, but some of us are great at it. Because we know that there's an advantage of making it productive. Because if we can take things, and some people may look at negative, and turn them into something positive, then it allows us to do greater things for the Lord. And I hope that you choose to make criticism something productive. I mean, don't worry about the other person. If they're being honest with their intentions of criticism, then good for them. If they're being negative, and they're trying to hurt you, that's between them and God. Don't worry about that. Just do what you should do as a Christian. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time in your word. Father, thank you for uh, examples that you've given us in the Bible. And Father, I pray that you help us all to, to learn how to handle criticism. Consider it something positive instead of something negative. And help us to be honest and true to you even in times of criticism. Father, we love you. We thank you again for uh, the work you're doing. And Father, I pray that you'll continue to do it in us. And we'll pray this in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Again, I hope you're uh, enjoying these, these videos. I hope they're doing something good for you. I know we're not able to meet in the church house right now, but uh, let's just keep praying. Praying that the Lord will uh, calm this down, these surges that we are having. Um, pray for one another that we as a church family, uh, ones that are sick, uh, may they get better, but also for the ones that are well, that they may keep well. Keep safe and just do your part. Be smart, but also do the godly thing. And again, I encourage you, pray for one another. Check up on one another. This doesn't have to... Uh, we may be isolating ourselves right now and, and keeping social distancing, but it doesn't mean that you, you don't have to do, talk to one another. Pick up the phone. Call somebody. Let them know you're thinking about them, and let them know that you're only a phone call away. Thank you.